Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for GWBC Radio's Open for Business. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of GWBC Open for Business, and this is going to be a good one. Today we have with us Tammy Cohen with Infomart. Welcome, Tammy. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, before we get too far into things, tell us about Infomart. How are you serving folks? So right now we're getting back to doing business, which is exciting. We were pretty slow there for a while, but uh, background checks are back in. People are hiring again. Hopefully we will be back to norm in the next year. So you're kind of a leading indicator, I would guess, in some respects for hiring, huh? Very much so. Anytime a recession happens, we're always one of the first ones to see it. And in this case, we were definitely, as soon as the hiring stopped, background checks stopped. But they're starting up again. So that's a good sign. So now tell us about the genesis of your business. How did you get started in this line of work? So 30 years ago, I was an administrative assistant and we had an employee that came in and basically just showed up for a day and left and uh, was basically getting um, unemployment from multiple states because you could do it at that time. And I found out a background check was about $150. So about six months later, I decided I would start my own business because I could do a background check. And that's sort of how we got going. So you thought $150, surely I'll be able to do it for less than that? Like I, I, there must be a better way? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I had worked for uh, banks and I had worked for real estate companies. So I understood public records and I understood credit reports and I had already done verifications of education and employment over the phone. So I sort of had all the components in different um, positions. Then how, what kind of gave you the courage to say, you know what, I'm going to do this on my own and I'll leave my kind of secure job for this kind of the world of the entrepreneur? Well, I, you know, I was 25, so let's start there. And uh, well, I was working for a real estate company, and we uh, built a uh, building, and the owners gave us handguns, you know, Southern swag at the time, if you go back 25 years ago, and I didn't get a gun, so I walked in crying and quit. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, well, if I'm going to start a business, I guess this is the time. And I think starting a business when you're younger is a lot easier because in my mind, I was like, okay, I can always catch back up by the age of 30. Right. It, things don't work out. That's, uh, I think there's a song that says, when you've got nothing, you've got nothing to lose. <laughs> that is so true. So then uh, when the pandemic hit um, seven months ago, did business just kind of go to a stop and you had to kind of navigate that water? Yes. It, it, uh, you know, when it first happened, I sort of like, like everybody else, I ran out to Home Depot, got everything to do my plants and Michaels to do crafts. I thought this was going to be a vacation. And about three weeks in, when we had no business. It was like, wow, we've got to figure this out and we've got to figure it out fast. So uh, very interesting. It, it stopped within two weeks. I mean, it was a, a amazing plummet. And then, so what'd you do? Like, how'd you gather your team and lead them through this kind of a, a tricky situation? So in our situation, you know, it's like a, we have a long tenured team. And because of that, we were sitting there pushing. As you can tell, I am working from home today with my um, IT girl in the background. Uh, but so with my team, we've had a lot of experience. I put it out there. We've got to figure out something. And I was watching a webinar and I decided that, hey, I'm the queen of screen. I can also be the queen of uh, screen for COVID-19 and put my team together. And it's that's what's amazing when you work with a really tenured, experienced team. There was no politics like normal, you know, and politics are good. And when you get into innovation because everybody's, you know, giving their opinion and you're making it better. But everybody just sort of said, he's the best. Give it to him. Let's get this going. So we stood it up in two months, which is amazing. Amazing. And then you built this app and platform that helps um, people get back to work and, and even beyond work, go to back to school. And um, to be able to crank that out so quickly, that's, that's really a testament to your team. Yeah. They, you know, we, we, you know, that's, 
besides having the tenured team, um, I think we have had a lot of experience in innovation. And, you know, and when we go through those types of sprints, you know, we know who is going to be focused over here on operations and make sure everything's going great. And then the other team we know is solely focused on, you know, whatever sprint we have at that moment. So we're really built and experienced in being able to do it. So uh, that was a great benefit to us. So now building, it's one thing. How did you get kind of adoption? It was amazing. I have never in all of my 31 years of InfoMart had a situation where we sent out an email campaign. And on the first email campaign, we got 40 email responses wanting to see our platform. And it's just continued to roll like that. Daily, we're getting people um, that want to see it. Right now, we already have 5,600 people that are being screened every day on it. And we're onboarding a 15,000 um, employee company this next week. Wow. It's, it's amazing story. Um, it is. It is. It, it's, it's great. And, and what's really cool about this, why people are really attracted to it is that we've all seen the employee assessment that, you know, the daily symptom assessment that you can take, you know, all over the internet. So what ours does is that we, one, we have an app that the employee can do that with a lot of other features in it for employers. But what we've done is built a platform for the employer. So the employer can see who is available to work that day, who can't work that day. It lets you do contact tracing. It lets you identify hotspots. Employees can request their PPE and it automatically goes to the person who does that fulfillment. And the janitorial is closely uh, is closely working with HR and the platform where they can close a part of the building, clean that part of the building, and then let everybody know it's back open again. And all that has automated messages to the employees that work in that section. So it's pretty amazing stuff. And it's one of those things where you're not just identifying a problem, you're giving them also the solution to the problem that's being identified. Yes. We, you know, and HR has taken on a huge load with this pandemic. It's amazing. So that was a little of our thought. All these years we've worked with security and HR knowing that we need to automate as much as we can. So the customization to set it up is pretty intricate, but it's purposeful so that it really works for each individual company as detailed as you want it to be. And then um, it, it, right now, so you started rolling it out just kind of your own email list, and then have you gotten now kind of a, a more, uh, I guess, kind of more strategic uh distribution or getting it out there to the public? Like, did you build a, a campaign, a marketing campaign around it? So, yes, we've been marketing it and, and we have a campaign and we've been using our, you know, our database as well as building on others. Um, but I would say we're doing our normal marketing. Uh, you know, InfoMart, you know, we're pros, experts at background checks. I wouldn't say we're an expert at marketing, but I think we do a really good job. And then, um, like you said, that now that it seems like the market has turned around a little bit, so the state of the market is more positive and people are going about hiring, is that across the country or just in select states? Well, based on our business, and we work with all industries, we're seeing it across every industry, but we're, we are highly concentrated in staffing which I think is even more of a testament that things are picking up because we, we have over 650 staffing companies that we do their background checks. And um, some of them are the largest in the world. So it's, it's picking up all over. Now is your business primarily in the United States or is it global? We actually, we, we are global and we actually are one of the few in the industry that have a global platform. So we actually do the background checks, global background checks for some of our competitors. That's probably not on their brochure. <laughs> I don't know. You know, we're we're a pretty friendly industry because <laughs> it's we're actually sort of small. <laughs> so now what's the most rewarding part of your job nowadays? So right now, what is really up my alley that I am so excited about is, and this is my term here, is pioneering the new world of work because it's a new world. Everything from how we engage our employees to how we communicate, how we manage them, how we measure performance, um, just everything has changed. And we have the opportunity to build 
the perfect scenario. So um, pioneering that new world of work is, is what I really have my eye and heart in. So then that goes beyond just the background screening? Uh, well, I'm talking about internally for my employees. Yes. Ah. I think everybody is going to have this opportunity to rebuild their workforce and focused on, you know, our number one asset, our employees. How are we going to, to work from home or work remote and give them those opportunities? Infomart was 100% uh, in, you know, in the office. I really did not believe we could work remote. I never would let anybody work remote. I just didn't think it would work. So I have been the first one to say I was totally wrong. And our performance numbers are actually higher than when we were in the office. Now, how, what, are, what are the metrics you're measuring for performance? So because we're doing background checks, we're sort of information in and out. So we have different measurements as far as how many of, say, a criminal history you process. And then it, there's a matrix of how in-depth was the criminal record on it? Was there five charges? Were there 15 charges? So it, our system is pretty, pretty sophisticated in how it performs and gives us the, the daily performance numbers on everybody. And that you're seeing a, a more performance when people are working from home? Yeah. So somebody that say, let's an easy way to, to, to sort of get it is um, say somebody who's calling on employers for an employment verification. They're actually doing more of those at home than they did when they were sitting at their off in the, at the office. Wow. So now um, does this affecting your clients? Are they working from home more? Does that change anything in terms of the screening? Um, so it hasn't really changed anything because we are, you know, automated and they were requesting things automated. And what we've done is we've sort of put some new services out that are built around screening for the remote workforce. So we have a, uh, identity application that is touchless. So you can send a link to your, uh, prospective candidate and they can fill out all the forms and all the information. And it comes to us we do our background check and it's back to the customer. And whoever wants to access it at the customer's site through their user access. Now, do you help the customer if they had to, like maybe they are going remote for the first time and having a work from home workforce. Is there any kind of um, consulting you do to help them make that easier? Or do, are you stay in your lane in terms of just handling the screening part? You know, it's fine. We are experts in background checks. Through the years, people have asked, will you do, you know, you know, private investigation and different things. And I have found just to be focused on background checks. But what we have done is say for um, somebody that's now hiring remotely, we have a whole new list of verification questions that we can interview that candidate asking, you know, who's going to have access? Have you worked remotely? Are you comfortable in front of a camera? You know, all these different verification questions to make sure that this is the person you want to be working remote for that type of position. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, you as a woman owned uh, CEO of a woman owned firm and you've won multiple awards regarding that. Um, how important has GWBC and maybe WeBank been in terms of the growth of your company? I, wow. That's, that's, uh, I can't even come up with the words on how how impactful WeBank and GWBC has been in, in building InfoMart, especially the past five years. Um, it amazes me the women that don't get certified, but it's, it's just like anything you get involved in, right? Like a chamber of commerce. If you don't get involved and go to meetings and engage and get to know people, you're not going to get anything out of it. But as soon as you just start showing up, it is remarkable and how these corporations are supporting uh, women-owned businesses. Amazing, really is. And these organizations make it happen. Now, I've been uh, working with GWBC for a while now, and I get to hear these stories from the women-owned business folks. And it's just the the amount of collaboration and support that they get from the, the association is phenomenal. And are you finding that that was helpful during a pandemic? Like when there was at the beginning of this, when you there was a, so much information out there, to have a trusted place that's kind of watching your back, uh, that to me would be 
you know, that that can make the difference between sticking around and not sticking around. Oh, it said, you know, um, we may came out with their COVID provider list and was sending out regular information on PPE, PPEP and different things. And I had an entire team. So Infomart has 150 employees. So I had a good team that was, you know, researching and keeping their, you know, uh, keeping up with everything. And it was amazing how I could send a GWC, uh, BC, you know, email or we bank email with links and they would get more information out of that than they would any place else. So they did a great job in supporting us, but not just in sp- supporting us with information. Um, a, a number of the organizations had um, virtual meetings where they would give you 15 minutes in front of a company that you got to talk. And the supplier diversity people right now are so committed to diverse businesses and getting us in their organizations. And so those opportunities that they've given us has been, if anything, it gives you hope and keeps you motivated that, yes, I can do this. We're going to survive, you know. And in a lot of cases, I mean, I've interviewed folks where they, they've gotten important pieces of business from these larger enterprise firms that they would never have been able to get in front of in, in any other way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, though, it's important for people that you know are listening. It just doesn't happen overnight. Again, you have to get involved. But as soon as you get involved, it happens. And, it's, and it, it really does happen. I mean, Fortune 500 companies that you would have a really hard time getting to somebody. Um, they're very open to listen and, and even help you improve. I mean, if you're not ready, they'll say, hey, you need to, you need to figure this out before I take you on to my stakeholders. So they, they give you, they really work at not just getting you business, but helping you be a better business person. Right. And do, and they're telling you what you need to do in order to get their business. Like that's hard. You usually don't get that feedback from prospective clients. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, they'll, they'll tell you, Hey, you know, I want to hear a differentiator. I don't want to hear you just give good customer service. I want to know why, you know, right. they really, they, they, they train you on how to really sell your business and where you need to improve. And there's really nobody else out there that gives you that other than, you know, like me, I learned from the school of hard knocks, but there's not a much, you know, it's a lot quicker to the top when you don't have to do it that way. You got that right. That It's hard enough to do it without help. But when, when you have an association that's willing to watch your back and help you, I recommend everybody take advantage of it. Yes. And, and women are really good about helping each other in a very honest way and raw way, you know, uh, it's, it's amazing the people that I've had that I'm friends with that are women business owners that might be very active in Michigan in the automotive industry and, you know, letting me know, Hey, if you can get this, this, this together, then I can take you in, you know, it, it's, it's amazing how the women work together through, uh, we bank. Yeah, um, we find that to be the case, very collaborative. Everybody's kind of rooting for everybody, and um, they're willing to share kind of best practices and um, they share what it takes in order to be successful. And just to get that inspiration is important and uh, to to learn from other people's mistakes can help you. But I also find it's like you said, in terms of an association, any association, whether it be GWBC or any the chamber, any of the other ones, it isn't something you just pay your dues and then business happens. You got to get involved. You got to volunteer. You got to take leadership positions. You got to kind of invest into the association if you want to really reap the rewards. Exactly. And right now I keep telling everybody, it's like, you know, we aren't, you know, face to face. So, you know, make sure your camera's on, make sure you dial in early. So you're on the front page, you know, chat, Know what you're going to say. Put out your LinkedIn in chat so you can meet new people, you know, and follow up with them in a LinkedIn message. So it, it, it's, you know, it's a whole new way of doing business, but there uh, is ways to still connect. Right. Because that's what people do business with people. So act like a human. It's, yeah. it's really not that hard. Now, uh, Tammy, so what's next for you? Now, it sounds like you're going to be able to incorporate some of these things that you're doing during the crisis into your future business when the pandemic wanes. Yes. So 
Um, SimTim is, is, is morphing into a wellness type of platform that we feel that is going to be very, very important. And we're starting to, um, well, there's companies that are coming to us right now that want to integrate to, to add our product into theirs. So I think that's going to be an exciting future in 2021 for SimTim. And then as far as background checks, you know, coming up with this whole new world of work background screening, we've been uh, spending a lot of time in developing new services, new products. And of course, looking at how can we give you a better service, better information for, uh, you know, for less money, because <laughs> everybody's watching their budgets right now. And we realize that and we want to help our customers in that way. So now who's the ideal prospect for you? You mentioned you work with a lot of agencies. Are they the best prospect? Do you get most of your work through them or do you go directly to the companies? Uh, we go, we work directly with the companies. So, um, yeah, so we have a number of Fortune 500 companies. Um, I think one of the exciting companies we work with is the NFL, and we do the NFL Combine, and that's really exciting. That's a little different than the norm. But we do work with major corporations across the United States, and we do everything from screening their candidates for employers for employment, as well as we screen the employees of their vendors. Um, so we have a, a healthcare platform. So we have some different things that we do, but we are really have a good hold in the staffing industry. So we, our system is sort of um, customized and very specific to help staffing. So uh, because at the end of the day, staffing needs to get somebody in there quick. So we have to get that person screened quickly for them. Now, do you have any advice for the business owner that maybe is too small for you or can't afford you at this point in their kind of life cycle? Uh, is there any lo low hanging fruit they can be doing to protect themselves and get the right person in? So I think to protect yourself is to be to understand what you can and cannot use in a background check. So going on LinkedIn and Facebook and hiring somebody after you is not good. You should not be doing that. Um, so, you know, and a lot of people don't realize, you know, a criminal history is going to cost you around $10. Uh, that is not that expensive. Um, verifications cost about that much. I mean, most of our employers spend about $30. It's not a lot when you start looking at the quality of person or just lawsuits, what you could, what trouble you can get in for hiring the wrong person. So it's something that everybody should make a priority. It, it really is. And it's not about screening out people. It's about screening to get the right person in that position. Cause we're very supportive of, you know, second chances. And in fact, we, um, the way we assist our customers in setting up their programs is that when we're going through helping them set up what they're going to hire, and not hire, we really make sure that they're looking at giving people a second chance because there's a lot of success out there with people that have had a past criminal history. Good stuff. Well, congratulations on all the success and thank you so much for sharing your story. If somebody wants to learn more and have more substantive conversation with you or somebody on your team, what's the website? Uh, it is infomart, I-N-F-O-M-A-R-T dash USA.com. Well, thank you again for sharing your story today, Tammy. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on GWBC Open for Business.